On several occasions, I've heard the claim that insects who are hit or run over by cars die painlessly because they splat instantaneously. While this might be true in some instances, it's definitely not always the case, as I'll show in this video. As one example, here's what looks like a grasshopper that was hit on the road in a rural area near Albany, New York, USA. The grasshopper's leg is still twitching, and its abdomen seems to be heaving in and out. We can hope that this is merely reflex movement, but it's hard to know for sure. And when the grasshopper was first hit, maybe it was more alive than it is now. In case this grasshopper was still conscious, I crushed it with my shoe against the road in order to put it out of its possible misery. Here are the pieces of its body after crushing. About 10 meters away from this grasshopper was another, which had apparently collided with a car. Its body was mostly intact, but about 15 centimeters away was what looked like this grasshopper's leg, which may have been torn off during the collision. The grasshopper appeared to be dead now, but I don't know how long it took to die. In general, if we try to estimate the fraction of bugs that die immediately from car impacts based on looking at the road, our estimate will be strongly biased because most of the bugs we see weren't just hit. They may have collided with a car hours or days ago. Similarly, estimates of the fraction of bugs that are squished completely by car tires on the first run over the insect will be biased, because once a bug is injured, it will probably be run over many times by subsequent cars before we see it, which will tend to squish it out more completely than the squishing that happened when it was first run over. It's actually kind of surprising that there are any bugs on the road that aren't fully squished given how many cars drive by, but I would guess that something like one-fourth of all dead bugs that I saw on the road weren't fully squished, and some weren't squished at all, probably having been killed by impact with the car in the air. Grasshoppers were particularly abundant this time of year. This video was filmed on 10 September 2016. As I walked by the road, I often saw grasshoppers jump away from me into the ditch. At other times of the year, the roadkill casualties tend to be slugs, snails, and especially earthworms that come to the surface of the soil during rainstorms. For this reason, I think it's especially important to drive less during or right after a rainstorm. As you can see, dead bugs on the road sometimes attract other bugs trying to eat the carcass. These bugs themselves may in turn be run over. This yellow and black bug may have been killed in that way, or maybe it's alive, I can't tell. It looks like a yellow jacket or wasp or something. This page says, quote, Western yellow jackets scavenge protein from dead insects and carrion. These bits of dead bugs and roadkill are then chewed into a delicious, locally sourced paste for the insatiable young." End quote. There was also vertebrate roadkill. This looks like a salamander. And this is a crushed snake. The snake is long enough that I would guess that the car tire that ran it over didn't crush the whole body which means the snake may have been in excruciating pain for some time before it died. Here's a rabbit that was hit. This is the only video clip that I filmed on a different date than 10 September 2016. This is from 17 September. On balance, I probably support the existence of roads because they prevent plant growth on significant areas of land 
and such plant growth would support large numbers of additional invertebrates and vertebrates. Thus, while roads cause many animal deaths, they may avert even more deaths by preventing animals from being born. Here's one back of the envelope calculation regarding this point. On the day when I did the filming for this video, I would guess that I saw about one dead bug for every 5 to 50 meters of road. Let's say it's one dead bug every 15 meters. Suppose that bugs last three days on roads before they get eaten or washed away. I'm just making this up. And assume that bugs get killed for about 210 days out of the year, since there aren't many bugs in the winter months. So in total, there would be 210 divided by 3 equals 70 times as many roadkill bugs as I saw on this day alone. That implies one dead bug for every 21 centimeters of road per year. Based on Google Maps, this road and its bordering gravel seem to be about 20 feet wide. 20 feet wide times 21 centimeters of road per bug killed is 1.3 square meters covered by road per bug killed. But a square meter of grass can support more than one grasshopper-sized insect per summer. This page says, quote, It has been shown that even a moderate infestation of 10 grasshoppers per square meter can typically consume up to 60% of the available forage, depending on the condition of the forage stand, end quote. So one square meter of grass can in general support several grasshoppers, or the equivalent mass of other insects. Moreover, the density of insect roadkill is particularly high on my road because it's in a rural area. Roads in cities or even suburbs should in general have fewer dead insects. Now here's another rough calculation, this time done at a macro level and for vertebrates. Wikipedia reports on a study estimating deaths of various mammals on roads. Adding the death tolls of the mammals listed gives 129.35 million deaths per year. This list perhaps omits many kinds of mammals, so let's increase it to a generous 500 million, which is plausibly too high. This page estimates that U.S. roads cover about 5.3 million hectares. Based on the numbers discussed here, I estimate that there are maybe at least 10 wild mammals per hectare of land. So U.S. roads may prevent at least 50 million mammal years per year. And given that many young mammals die within a few weeks or months of birth, this is probably equivalent to at least 50 million mammal deaths per year, if not a few times more than that. So in this calculation, the roadkill numbers appear possibly higher than the prevented mammal deaths, but the roadkill numbers are perhaps overestimated and the wild mammal numbers are probably underestimated. So I'm uncertain which quantity is actually higher. Also, this calculation assumed that roads only prevent as many mammals as their area covers, but this assumption may be wrong given the effects of habitat fragmentation. Moreover, preventing an animal from being born is better from an antinatalist or negative utilitarian standpoint than merely avoiding a roadkill death, because animals not killed on roads will die in some other way at a later date, often painfully. That said, roadkill is plausibly bad on balance because it increases the rate of deaths per unit time. Finally, I would advise against stopping your car by the side of the road to look at bugs that you may have hit, both because it could be dangerous for you, but also because if you drive onto the grass on the side of the road, your car's tires may crush even more bugs that are inhabiting the grass. That said, if you think you see a vertebrate on the road that looks like it may not be fully dead, it might be worth pulling over to check on it depending on the risk to you. It might be good to, for example, use a stick to push a half-dead animal off the road 
to prevent it from being painfully hit by further cars. I myself don't have a driver's license and so don't have experience with this kind of operation. In the rest of this video, I'll show various non-roadkill animals that I found during my survey of the road on 10 September 2016. There were many birds in the surrounding trees, including these, which may be crows. Thank mm -hmm. you.